out, Ty! Hey, 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 where are we going? Out the party. All right. All right. Hey, we're talking up. You got it. got a good turnout tonight. You can always count on destroy your officers. I'm sorry you're not having a good time, Pistol. That's not true. You didn't have to come. I'd have understood. Lloyd, I wanted to. Handsomest pair at the party. You wouldn't be prejudiced, would you, old shipmate? Not a chance. Not a chance. Bryce is one of the best. He is nice. Uh, Lloyd, it's awfully sticky in here. I'm going out. I'll go with you. Hey, no, no, stay. I, uh, I just need some air. I'll be back. I love you so. I love you. I'm so happy. No one's ever made me so happy. All right, Hester. So why the tears? Tell old Bryce. Pregnant. You sure? It's been weeks. 
Almost two months. All right. All right. I've saved some money. We'll find somebody. No. It's yours. I don't want an abortion. I want her baby. Esther, that's crazy. I'll get a divorce. I don't love Lloyd. I love you. I can leave Hawaii and make a fresh start. Esther. Look, I only go when I'm ordered to go. Now, if you're really pregnant, you've got to have an abortion. I'll help you all I can. And don't leave me, darling. Let me come with you tonight. You're not making any sense. I won't go back to Winwood ever. I'll send for my clothes. It won't work, Hester. Look, we'll handle this quietly. Quietly. But don't you make any trouble. Not with the promotion list four weeks away. So is the precious Navy. Of course it's a Navy. Haven't you learned anything about me? That's what I am. That's all I am. The Navy. You're trying to get rid of me. I won't let you. I'll tell Lloyd. I'll tell everyone. The Admiral. <laughs> the Admiral. Everyone. No. No, don't. No. Off the car, Harry. For Pete's sake, it's the fender. Is your sister going to faint if I sit on her fender? Stay away from the car, that's all. You're still wet. Boy, come on, you guys. David's <laughs> leaving for California tomorrow. This is supposed to be David's party. <laughs> Boy, he acted in deep, and I think something was wrong. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. I put six bits worth of gas in that tank. Now, where's it taking us? How about Waimanalo? I heard there's some girls having a party out there. <laughs> girls? White woman! Let's get out of here! Come on! You can't leave someone like that. David, there's a blanket on the floor back there. You're gonna be all right. 
help me. Cops, John! Cop, cop. Hey, we gotta get out of here! Oh! John! Will one of you open the door at least? I want to explain very quick. Let me just take He's a look. Right this outside. lady needs help fast. Oh, put her on the table, please. Oh. <laughs> Doctor. Oh. What happened to her? I don't know. You don't know? Where did she come from? I don't know. Where did you find her? Four of them. They took off, but they're not going anywhere. They really beat her up, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Must have used a meat axe. Who is she? No ID. Naked as a jaybird. I better run a check on this Sarah Liluohi. Pete, give me some procaine, 28 gauge oh, needle, and some. Please get my mother. I will. What's her name? Uh. Tell me your mother's name. Dor Doris. Uh, your mother's name is Doris. Doris who? Dor Doris Ashley. Doris Ashley. Now tell that cop. Hurry. Uh, Roger, uh, nine uh, able to one. Roger, boy William Robert, stand by. Niner able to. One boy, William Robert, show no want, uh, last known address. How's the stick? It's okay. Good as yesterday's? Yeah, sure. If you ever anything besides steak, I'd drop dead. Have it. Like me? If you're no habit, you and me are. We're, uh. Good in bed, right, Kurt? That's not what I was gonna say, but that's better. Where do we go from here, huh? I didn't lie to you, Marie. Yeah, I know. I'm telling you now, Marie, I can't promise you anything because there's nothing to promise. Maybe I've been alone too long. Maybe I got a part missing. But you can't count on anything. That's one health insurance policy you carry, sweet lips. Ozzy's. Sure is. Kurt. Maddox. Doris Ashley's daughter is in Mercy Hospital. She's in bad shape. Some locals dumped her and ran. We picked all four up at the address on the car registration. I want you to head out to Winwood. Len, send Jack Heller out there, will you? I just did two 18-hour days back to back. Doris Ashley's daughter. I want you to go out there, okay? You look awful. It's a habit. You want to forget later? It could be a while. What makes tonight different? I believe you've forgotten the liqueur glasses. She's new, gentlemen. Indulgence is in order. Gratitude is in order. You've given us a great dinner, Doris. And I love this dessert, this apple... What is it? It began as apple cobbler. I added the pineapple. 
In fact, it's a recipe of my great-grandmother's from New England. Well, I like that. I like to be reminded of my heritage. Yes, my husband always said if we forget our heritage, we forget who we are. I wish I would known him. You would have liked each other, Glenn. In many ways, you're very similar. Now, that is the ultimate compliment. Preston Ashley was special. He certainly was. I wonder what he would have thought of this statehood business. Not again, Foley. Once and for all, will you drop statehood? This is not my personal campaign, and you know it. The people keep agitating, especially the Orientals. How do we deal with them? You follow my lead. Stop listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have. There'll be no statehood. The democratic process would raise holy hell around here. Forgive me, Doris. You're forgiven, Harvey. What's more, I agree. We govern here by divine right, chosen by God to lead these people. I always thought it was greed, not God, that lit the way for us. You're being frivolous, as usual. But controlling three million acres of sugar cane, as the four of us do, I should think the laborers would be grateful for the jobs we provide them. Excuse me, gentlemen. Please don't wait. I'm Kurt Maddox, Miss Ashley. It's your daughter. She's been hurt. Tell me. She was beaten. Beaten? That's what it looks like. She's at Mercy Hospital. She was brought in. Some men brought her in a car, and they ran. If you want, I'll drive you to the hospital. I'll join you in a minute. been an accident. Don't be alarmed. Please sit. Finish your dinner. If I need help, I'll know where to find you. Doris, I'll go with you. No, Glenn. I know you care. It sustains me. Promise you call if you need me. I promise. Who did this? Who beat you? Tell me what happened. How did this happen? It was an accident. How? Where? You were with Lloyd. You went to a party with Lloyd. Please! Tomorrow. No, now. Who are these men they're talking about? I, oh, I just found I can't hear you. Why were you in a car with these men? Brought me here. Found me and brought me here. They're animals. No, this no, I... Vicious, vicious car. I would have died. They saved me. They're innocent. They're innocent. Well, if I they didn't do this, who did? I... Was it Lloyd? Lloyd, no, no, not Lloyd. Not Lloyd. Someone else. <laughs> Is that correct, Hester? Some other man? Who's the other man? Who's responsible? I'm responsible. I'm the responsible one because I'm the pregnant one. <sighs> pregnant. <laughs> Oh, I, I 
heard you, Mrs. Murdoch. You're pregnant, but it's not your husband's child. Please stop! Please stop! I want the doctor! I need, I need the doctor! Who's the doctor? I want... Hester! No! Shh! Control yourself. <laughs> the doctor says you'll recover. So I'm going to wait right here until we get our story straight. You are not going to destroy me, Hester. I've created an empire from your father's estate. I have a position here. No one's higher. You will not drag me down in disgrace. Now you're going to do as I say. Oh, Captain, this is Lieutenant Murdoch. Kurt Maddox, Lieutenant. I'm yeah. sorry about your wife. How is she? Doc says she's gonna be okay. Uh, he said there were four of them. They beat her? Someone did. Captain Maddox. It's you I wanted. How's Hester? Mercifully asleep. I'd like to see her. Tomorrow, Lloyd. I am her husband. Yes, Lloyd, you are her husband. Can't she sleep? Captain? The men who assaulted my daughter didn't stop there. They also raped her. Raped? Is that what the doctor said? It's what Hester says. Those four men raped my daughter. They raped her. They beat her. They almost killed her. Turn to your right. Your name? David Masuda. Address, 635B, on up Paul Street. Sex, oh, male. Race, Hawaiian. Age? 22. Height? 5'6". Race? Filipino. Alright, step right through here. Uh, you have all your personal effects. Take all your keys, your change, your watch, put them on this tray. Uh, eyes? Yes. Okay. Right, face forward. Your right. I'm all packed to leave. I'm supposed to leave for college in the morning. I told him not to pick her up. I said it ten times, but he had to stop for her. The damn big shot had to stop for her. John. Next. Is that David Masuda? Did they hurt him? What have you done Nobody to him? Nobody hurt anybody, sis. Right now, we need a lawyer. Tom Halahone, remember him? My math teacher in high school. He went to the States to become a lawyer. He lives up near Punchbowl. Where's my car? Police have it. See if you can reach him by phone. What's his name again? Halahone. Tom Halahone. P.E. Coy Street. All right, come on, let's go. Take the cuffs off, Jack. Yes, sir. I don't want to be disturbed, okay? Yes, sir. You're John Liluohe. You know who I am? I saw it on the door. Captain Curtis Maddox. Kurt Maddox. Sit down, John. Take a load off. Now I remember John Lee Luohe. Farrington High. You were a football star. I wasn't a star. Yes, you were a star. 
I saw you make three touchdowns in that game against Roosevelt. Anyway, tell me about tonight, John. We were riding around. That's my sister's car you picked up. Were you drinking? A couple of beers. Well, more than half a case isn't a couple. There were four of us. Well, it's still more than a couple. Anyway, then what? Then we rode over to the beach and went swimming. Probably naked, huh? Well, there was no one around. Except Hester Ashley Murdoch. Tell me about that, John. We found her near the beach. No clothes, covered with blood. I couldn't leave her there. So you dumped her at Mercy Hospital and ran. We were scared. I don't blame you. I'd have been scared too if I'd have raped and beaten that poor raped? girl. That's what the lady said. I didn't rape her. Maybe it's your three pals had the hot pants tonight. Maybe they saw that white they woman. They didn't even want to stop. Maybe not. Maybe you just held her down. No, and rape that's it. crazy. And the we didn't do it, Captain. Sometimes an accessory can make it easy on himself, John. But he's got to tell us everything. I told you everything. The lady says different. She says you did do it. You and your pals each had a shot at her, and then you used her for a punching bag. She's lying. Sure. Jack. Sir, put the cuffs on him. All right, come on, let's go. Tom Hallihoney. Let me see your authorization. I'm glad you could Everything will be John, all right. who is he? It's Tom Alahone, our lawyer. You remember Tom, my math teacher at Farrington. I never went to high school. You said your sister was being a lawyer. I I'm a lawyer. You want to send him up against them? Why don't we just confess? Shut up, Harry, or I'll shut you up. Yeah? Come on, right now. I'll break this over your head. Oh, yeah? Come on. Let's see. I've been listening to you ever since we saw that woman, and look where I am! You're the one who had to stop for her! Shut up! Now it's Ashley's daughter! I haven't even touched a girl in a month, and now I'm in jail! I said stop it! Stop it. Bitch, I, I said stop, stop it! Oh yeah, you shut it. me up! I'll help. split your head in two! I won't help! Put it down, Harry Shigeru. You always had a big mouth. I said put it down! Look, you guys are in a lot of trouble. So just sit down and listen. Don't you want to ask them something? Yes. Y yes, I do. I want to ask him something. How long are we going to be in prison? You're not going to prison. You're innocent, all of you. Yeah, but they don't believe us. How many years? Look, I gotta know so I can tell my mother to buy me calendars. How many calendars? Five? Ten? Twenty? A hundred? It's no use. Lab finished with that convertible? The girls? Yeah, they're done. Let her have it. I'll take care of it. Captain, this thing, I can't get a handle on this thing. Jack, this thing's only five hours old. Yeah, I know, but look, Captain, those four kids, they're not stupid. They know that going after a white woman is like committing suicide. So why didn't they just dump her when they were through? Why'd they drive to Mercy Hospital? Why'd they leave the car? Those are questions we're gonna try and answer because that's what they pay us for. Yeah. Better send someone out for coffee and donuts for gonna be a while. Captain, it's my turn. It's been my turn. Well, I don't have three kids.
Is this it? It's close enough. Thanks for the ride. Good night. Listen, I know that John likes you. But you don't. My feelings aren't important. It's those four boys. Their lives are at stake. I know that. You do? Then why were you acting like a sightseer? Hey, come on. From the time that we got to headquarters, you just stood there like a lump. What do you expect? A, a fist fight? Were you waiting for me to punch someone? I was waiting for you to take charge. Look, they need somebody to fight for them. Somebody with a backbone. You don't know anything about me. OK, then tell me. How many cases have you had? How many times have you been in court? How many lives have you saved? Well, I'm, I'm just starting out. I don't have much of a practice yet. In fact, it's tough paying the rent in my office. But I'll do my best. Fairly's tough day or night. You never walk the beach, so he takes it out on the guys of the bed. Here. How are you? No, you know me. Stuff paralyzes me. Doesn't sound like too bad an idea either. Is everything okay? Everything's the way it always is. Only there's a little more of it tonight. <clears throat> I spend all my time working in the sewers, so I should be fresh out of surprises, but I'm not. Well, tomorrow's another day. Aloha, ladies and gentlemen. Top of the morning. 
This is George Elmendorf with his Morning Report, coming to you from the studios of KRXT, the voice of the islands in downtown Honolulu. It's not a happy day here in Honolulu, folks. There are ugly clouds casting shadows all over these smiling islands today. Last night, right here on Oahu, a young woman was raped by four local men. The innocent victim of this savage attack was Esther Ashley Murdoch. Mrs. Murdoch was terribly assaulted by the rapists. The four, all young men, are employees of the Kaha'ava Sugar Company. At present, Mrs. Murdoch is fighting desperately for her life at Mercy Hospital. Mrs. Murdoch, still a bride, you would say, married less than a year, is the wife of a Navy destroyer officer aboard the USS Carl Trublot, Lieutenant Lloyd Murdoch. Mrs. Murdoch is also the daughter of Doris Ashley, widow of Preston Ashley, who, as you all know, traced his family back to Hawaii's earliest settlers. Oh, that nurse. A single ugly moment of the historic amnesty between our people. I'm not waiting to find out. Hopefully, Jim, double the short for Aye, sir. We'll join together and restore peace to our island. Dr. Puana is very good. His sutures are perfect, Hester. I can almost promise there won't be any scars. Did you hear that, darling? No scars. Thank you, Howard. Hester and you are like family, Doris. Let me know if there's anything you need. There is one thing, in fact, Howard. I wonder if I might entice you out to Windward for lunch today. That's hard to decline. One o'clock, then. Fine. Maddox is outside. I told him you were too distraught to be questioned, but he'll be in here shortly with those four men. You must identify them, Hester. No. It's our only chance. I can't. I'm going to tell the truth. Very well. What is the truth? It was Bryce. Lloyd's friend? Lieutenant Parker, he did this to you? He didn't mean it. I know he didn't. When I told him about the baby, he was upset. Upset? I love him. I'll always love him. If you tell the police he'll be in the hands of the law, you'll never see him again. No one has to know it was Bryce. Maddox will find out. How? From me. I hate you. You're evil. I'm not evil. I'm a survivor. Come in, Captain. Sorry, I.
Captain, can we make this as quick as possible? My daughter suffered enough. Miss Murdoch, are these the four men who raped and assaulted you last night? Because we want you to know, we feel awful bad about what happened to you. To Mrs. Murdoch, sir. That's why we came, sir. Thank you. I want to thank all of you. Every one of you. If there's anything we can do, sir. No. Lieutenant Murdoch appreciates your loyalty very much, ma'am. Very much. Defense counsel, having filed a motion to release the defendants on their own recognizance, the court will now hear arguments on said motion from the defense counsel. Now, the court reminds all those persons in this courtroom that any disturbance or conversation while this court is in session will be summarily dealt with by the bailiff, ejecting said persons from this courtroom. Okay, defense counsel, will you proceed with your arguments? Your Honor. Excuse me. All right. Your Honor, I respectfully submit that since my clients have no previous criminal records, they be released on their own recognizance pending trial. Your Honor, these defendants are charged with rape. There's no more heinous crime in our society. I ask that they be held for trial without bail. Your Honor, I agree with the county attorney. No crime is worse than rape. A man who rapes a woman should not be allowed to walk free alongside decent people. My clients didn't rape anyone. They've been charged with a crime. They haven't been convicted of a crime. My clients have lived their entire lives in Honolulu. Their parents have lived their entire lives here. None of them, neither my clients nor any member of their four families has ever been charged with the crime, has ever appeared in a court of law to answer a criminal indictment. The uh, county attorney's request that the defendants be held without bail is denied. The court also denies defense counsel's request for release of recognizance. The court sets bail at $10,000 for each defendant. Your Honor, may I respond? Go on. $10,000. Might as well be 10 million. My clients have no money. Their families have no money. I humbly ask the court to take these facts into consideration. Very well. Bail is set at $2,500 for each defendant. This proceeding is concluded. Please rise. So, we're headed back where we came from. Yeah, that filthy cell. I'll get the bail. I'll get you out of there. You and what army? I'll get you out. Let's go. Come on. Let's go, son.
Why did you lie to them? Lie? You said you'd get the money for the bail. How could you say that? I'm going to try. Then, then why didn't you save try? Why fill them full of false hope? Because someone had to. You're just going to hurt them in the end. I hate you for that. Mahalo. Kurt? What about this rape case? You tell me. I have my doubts. So do I. I have to go to trial. They didn't do it. Can you prove that? Nope. But we're working on it. Good. I don't want it, do you hear me? See you later. Don't tell her I brought you over. I'll be back at sunset. Thanks. I mean, absolutely no visitors. Absolutely no exceptions. Princess Luahine, my name is Tom Halliburton. There is no princess. I'm a rancher now. Those are my subjects. No two-legged subjects. Get rid of him, Roy. On your way, friend. No, wait, please. There's trouble in Honolulu, princess. There's been a rape. That's the new sport over there, Roy. What am I supposed to do, tackle him? Now cut it out, OK? It was a white woman, a Navy officer's wife. The police arrested four Hawaiian boys. They're innocent. Are you the judge? I'm their lawyer. Oh, lawyer. Your mother must be very proud of you. You go. Go home to her. Now, Roy, or you'll go with him. Aloha, counselor. What's happened to you? Don't you have any feelings for your own people? Those Hawaiian boys need you. The Navy officer's wife, the one who has accused them, is Doris Ashley's daughter. Doris Ashley. Give up. You finished. No, I'm not. I'll prove they didn't do it. But their bail is $10,000, and if I don't get it for them, they're going to rot in jail waiting to go on trial for a crime they didn't commit. I was waiting for the money part of this social visit. There isn't anywhere else to go. You're their only chance. I'm sorry, son. You're wasting your time. You don't give a damn, do you? I think I will throw your butt over that cliff. No, let him be. He's a crusader. You listen to me, Crusader. You think that I'm over here because I like talking to the cows, huh? I ran for my life, mister. I couldn't watch anymore. 
I couldn't look at any more slums. Seeing the maids so old, they are bent on their way to make the Howleys happy. Seeing Harvey Costa's plantation manager on the prowl for strong young kids to work the fields until they're old and they're bent. The missionary sons have turned these islands into one big workforce. We're a mother load of cheap labor for them. They mine us like other people dig for gold. They've been in jail for weeks. They're losing their hope. What did you say your name was? Tom Alejone. What are you doing here so early in the morning? Princess? I need a ride downtown. Thank you. Good morning, Captain. Can I help you? I'd like to ask you a few routine questions. Well, I heard it windward all my life, but it's better than they say. You're a lucky guy, Lieutenant. When we were married, Mrs. Ashley asked us to stay. She and Hester are very close. How about you and Hester? Hold it right there, Captain. You said a few routine questions. Lieutenant, a young woman's been beaten and raped. The four men we have in custody claim they're innocent. It's my job as investigating officer to question any other possible suspects. Possible suspects? I'm her husband. Yeah. And acts of violence by one married partner against the other is common on this island as mosquitoes. I resent this. I think I'd like to talk to a lawyer. You're not being accused of anything. I'm here on a routine check to clear you as a possible suspect. Now, how you two been getting along? Everything's fine. Help yourself to some lemonade. Never touch the stuff. You two fight? We have nothing to fight about. That makes you pretty special, Lieutenant. I didn't say we never fought. All right, when you do fight, what's it about? The usual things. I'm a bachelor. What usual things? I don't know. I can't remember. Well, it couldn't have been money. Something else, maybe, like booze. How about the bedroom? Any sex problems? Just who do you think you're talking to? You get tough with me, and I'll have to get tough with you. And I'm better at it, because that's my job, too. Did you have any sex problems? No. We didn't have any sex problems. This is Doris Ashley, calling Harvey Costa.
Pretty thick, aren't you? A destroyer, everybody is. What do they think of him on the ship? Great officer. Top of the heap. Popular guy. Married to Doris Ashley's daughter. He's sitting pretty. Not lately. Yeah, you're right. But before this mess. How about him and Hester? Still on their honeymoon. That night at the Whispering Inn, were you there when Hester told Murdoch she needed some fresh air? No. I think I was at the bar getting a drink. But you were with the Murdochs most of that night, weren't you? That's right. We shared a table. Just the three of you? Uh, no. I had a blind date. This blind date, what was her name? Ginny. I think her name was Ginny something. It was a one night stand, Captain. Where do I find Ginny something? You're really serious about this, aren't you? I'm never anything else but Ginny something. She was an army nurse at Higgum Field, I think. They can feel you think. Didn't you take her home? Sure. She was spending the night with a girlfriend in Waikiki. I took her to Waikiki. Don't ask me where. Not after five hours of booze. What the hell are you doing here, Maddox? Just tying up some loose ends. With my best friend? Now you're getting insulting. Well, that's what I do, Lieutenant. Insult people. Scare them. That's how I keep the world safe. Coming all the way out, Kurt. I don't like to leave the area during harvest. Too much going on. Go and see. I really like it out here. You know, sometimes I think this island would be a lot nicer if the Navy wasn't protecting it. I wouldn't miss them. <laughs> Especially Navy wives, huh, Kurt? For a fact. <laughs> you know, I like talking to you. I never have to say too much. Besides, that mess is behind us. Esther Murdoch identified those men. Not that easy, Mr. Crosser. So far, it's her story against theirs, and theirs sounds right to me. Sure. I've been dealing with these natives a lot longer than you have. I'll side with Hester. So should you. I'm a cop. Oh, you're the best. You had once in your family. Your father was the best. Well, I'm a long way from matching up to him. I'll be the judge of that. I can always count on him. Now I'm counting on you. I need your help. Washington wants Navy wives to be safe. They are safe. For crying out loud, we have one woman who says she was raped. And she identified the four men who did it. Four kids. They're old enough, Kurt. Hester Murdoch says they're guilty. They work for me. The reporters have identified them with me. Every time I see their names in the papers, I see my name in the paper. It's an open and shut case. Leave it like that. If you're not absolutely clear about what I'm saying, speak up. Good, good. You look tired, Kurt. Why don't you take a few days off? Get on a boat, visit the other islands. By the time you get back, Hester Murdoch will be ancient history. Thanks for the tour. She's down, Frank. I gave her 40 milligrams of pentobarbital while you were scrubbing. I haven't seen her since the night they brought her in. I appreciate this, Frank. It's really above and beyond. I know what a murderous schedule you keep down there in emergency. Beggars can't be choosers. 
Hard to believe she's been through so much. She looks like a little girl. Yeah. Well, let's get started. Two shadows under her eyes and along her cheekbones. That's melanin. Frank. Frank, listen to me. The rape happened just over a month ago. This woman is 12 to 14 weeks into term. She's three months pregnant. No wonder you picked me for this. Get out of my way. This is a therapeutic abortion. It's indicated, it's necessary. That's my professional judgment. Then you do it. You lose your license. Help me, Frank. I can't do it. I'm a cardiologist, not a surgeon. I'm not going to jail for you or anyone else. All right, then get. You belong in the emergency room. Go back where you belong. Well, you finally said it to my face. Frank, please, please. I'm sorry. I know how good you are. You'll have your reward. May God strike me dead if I'm lying. You'll get the next staff appointment. It's yours, Frank. The first opening, and you're out of the emergency room and into private practice. You'll be admitting patients, your own patients, I swear it. Last week, but still funny. <laughs> Long time no see. They had me jumping all over the place. Jack and I have been eating on the run. Aren't you about due to quit? Got plans tonight, hon. Ask for some time off. Take the boat to Kauai. I thought maybe you'd come along. When? Soon. Yeah? When? I got some paperwork to clean up. Sounds iffy. Hey, don't crowd me. I won't. It's over, Kurt, you and me. My mind's made up. What did I do? <laughs> For a smart guy, you're awful dumb. Now, what did you do? What didn't you do? You didn't do anything, Kurt. You never did and you never will. I need something. A girl, a woman needs something. Look, uh, do me one favor, hon. Don't show up during my shift anymore, all right? It'd be tough enough just passing that table all day. Seeing you in it would uh, be too tough. I never did look at you that I didn't want to undress you. I'd head out to Hickam Field after dinner, Captain. Where? Hickam Field Hospital, remember? Check on that army nurse that was Bryce Parker's blind date. Forget it. Forget the whole thing. We got enough to handle with those Pacific Heights break-ins. Go on home, get some old clothes. I want you to stake out the 800 block on Lanai Street. Starting tonight. 
Will counsel please approach the bench? We started with two panels this morning, 50 men each. You have seated two out of the first 24. Why, at this rate, we'll get eight, nine out of the first hundred. Let me in on your secret counsel. I'm using my peremptory challenges, Your Honor. Thanks for nothing. Your turn. I'm trying to seat an impartial jury, Your Honor. Ah, my turn. I will not sit in my chambers, twiddling my thumbs, while the clerk of the court finds us more jury panels. This case is going to trial. Understand. Now, I expect a lot more progress this afternoon. A lot more. Bailiff, would you please call the next juror? Warren Kamaheli. Prosecution exercises its peremptory challenge. You haven't even looked at him. Your Honor. My clients are entitled to a jury of their peers. They won't get it in this court because the county attorney doesn't want a jury. He wants a cheering section. He's been challenging jurors like Mr. Kamahaley all morning. I won't take this, Your Honor. That makes two of us counsel. You're asking for contempt. Putting me in jail won't change anything. My clients are sunk. They're sunk. The county attorney decided to reject this juror on sight. His name and the color of his skin was all the county attorney needed to get rid of him. That's a lie, counsel. Bailiff. Settle down, counselor. This man's name is Warren Kamahele. He's a citizen or he wouldn't be here. He doesn't look like a mass murderer. Are you a mass murderer, Mr. Kamahele? <laughs> Don't give me any trouble. You're not running this court. I am and you're not turning it into a three-ring circus. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Mr. Kamahele, will you wait until court is adjourned? We can talk then. I'd like the reporters present to hear us. Um, question him. Go ahead, question him. The juror is challenged, Your Honor. You can't do it. I'm doing it. And I'd like to remind the attorney for the county and the defense counsel that I am running this court and you're both in trouble with me today. Well, what's holding you up, Mr. Halehone? Thank you, Your Honor. You mustn't be afraid. You'll be going home in a few minutes. How old are you, Mr. Kamahele? 65. 66, pretty soon. Are you married? Yes, married. Do you have any children? Yes, I have three. Two boys, one girl. Tell us about them. How old are they? How do they earn a living? Oh, they're big now, grown up. Adam, my oldest boy, he's a pitcher. And he's the oldest boy, my grandson. Things he wants we can beat him. Do. Well, he beat us on this one. How so? He's a teacher. He's got the reporters on this side now. No, Sunday. They'll say we filled the jury box with a lynching party. Sunday school. William Tong. William Tong is acceptable, Your Honor. Raymond Anderson. Defense accepts Mr. Anderson. Richard Kahihi Kolo. The prosecution accepts Mr. Kahihi Kolo, Your Honor. Fred Hess. Defense accepts Mr. Hess. Andrew Takahashi is acceptable to the prosecution, Your Honor. Mr. Hubbard is acceptable to the defense. Gentlemen of the jury, you have been sworn in today as jurors in this case. In your capacity as jurors, you shall not discuss this case with the, each other or anyone else. Further, you shall not visit any scene or locale in which incidents of this case took place. Neither shall you read or listen to any press representations of the case uh, during the course of the trial. You will further refrain from holding any opinion in this case 
until all the evidence has been presented, final arguments have been given by the counsel, and I, the judge, have given you the final instruction regarding the laws applicable to this case. Mrs. Ashley? Don't use my name ever. I want you to know I'd give anything to undo what happened. I'll never forgive myself. We both know you're lying. Stop it. I didn't send for you to hear this false confession. You're safe. So far, I'm your safety. Do you understand? Yes. Yes. When the trial begins, I want you in court every day. All day, so that Hester can see you. Do you understand that? Yes, I understand. Go on. I'm finished. I'm leaving. You wait. Wait here until you don't hear my car anymore. The next morning, I brought the four defendants to Mercy Hospital and took them into Hester Murdoch's room. She said they were the men who raped her. Hester Ashley Murdoch identified these four men, David Masuda, Harry Shigeru, Michael Romero, and John Lilloohe, as the men who had beaten and raped her. That's right. Your witness. Captain Maddox, how long have you been a police officer? Going on 18 years. 18 years. Have you been involved in any other crimes of rape? More than I want to remember. Try and remember. Somewhere around 100. Around 100 cases of rape. Now, in all those incidents, has any rapist or rapist ever delivered the victim to a hospital? No, never. Has any alleged rapist or rapist ever carried the victim inside the hospital? No. Never? Never. No further questions. Call Dr. Frank Buana. Bring Dr. Frank Buana into the courtroom. Just came from Hickenfield Hospital, Captain. That nurse you told me to forget, Lieutenant Parker's blind date, Ginny something. Her name's Virginia Tierney. Go on. Well, that much of what he said was true, but it was all over early. Parker disappeared. He dumped her. She stayed till nine o'clock and left the party. Raise your right hand. So Parker lied. You promised to tell the truth, uh -huh. the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. Sit down. Sit down. Sit. Will you please sit? Your Honor, this is a Princess Luahine. I can see, Counsel. I'm awful sorry, Your Honor. Will you, for Pete's sakes, see it? With all due respect, Princess, your authority does not extend to this court. With all due respect, Your Honor, my authority doesn't extend to the end of my nose. <laughs> Mahalo, I thank you all the same.
<clears throat> All right. Mr. County Attorney, here's your witness. Dr. Buana, were you on duty at Mercy Hospital the night of September 5th? I was. Did you treat Hester Murdoch that night? Yes, I did. In layman's terms, doctor, please describe Mrs. Murdoch's condition when you first saw her. The patient's face was covered with blood. She was suffering from shock. Would it be accurate to say that her face was a mass of severe lacerations and bruises? Yes, it would. Subsequent to her beating and rape, did Mrs. Murdoch's family request that a therapeutic abortion be performed to terminate her pregnancy? Objection. The fact of rape has not been established, Your Honor. Sustained. I'll rephrase my question. Did the family of Hester Murdoch ask for a therapeutic abortion? Yes. Did you perform that abortion? Yes, I did. No further questions. Dr. Porn, do you have any medical evidence proving Mrs. Murdoch was made pregnant by the four defendants? No. Did you talk to Mrs. Murdoch while you were treating her? She was barely conscious. You, you didn't answer my question, doctor. Did you talk? Well, I was too busy. Did you know whom you were treating? Yes, of course. How? She told me... So you did talk to Mrs. Murdoch? If you can call that talking. Did she at any time say she had been raped? No. Did you examine Mrs. Murdoch to determine whether she had been raped? No. Doctor, in your opinion, is there any medical evidence of any kind to support the charge that Mrs. Murdoch was raped? Objection, Your Honor. Counsel is asking the witness to speculate. Sustained. Rephrase, please. Strike that, Your Honor. Listen to No him. further questions. He's trying to twist everything. You must be awfully tired. A little. It's nice out here. Uh-huh. It is. Peaceful. You mean after the courtroom? I thought you were wonderful. Anyway, it was a good start, I think. You know, sometimes I wonder why you don't hate me. Hate you? I mean it. I was so awful to you. You know I was. Well, you were scared. John was in jail. It's like a nightmare. I don't think I've met anyone like you before. Anyone as kind. <laughs> you make me embarrassed. No, it's true. I've never met anyone like you, Sarah. Sir, fresh uniforms as you requested. Ah, well, thank you, York. It's damned obliging of you to come all the way out here. I appreciate it. It's nothing, sir. Honest, uh, just wish I could really do something to help. You have, York. From that first day at the courthouse, your being there has helped more than you know. I heard them making your wife testify, sir, putting her on the stand and all. I'm awful sorry, sir. 
Thank you. You'd never see anyone doing that where I come from, sir. Those four monkeys wouldn't be sitting there in court where I come from. They wouldn't be around anymore, sir. They wouldn't be around. Morning. Ready for what? What nightmare of a masquerade party are you ready for? I'm a liar. I'm a murderer. It's true. I killed my own baby. I've been unfaithful to my husband. I'm the Scarlet Woman. Get those clothes off. I'm being called to the witness box and I'm dressed to fit the occasion. I told you what to wear. Hester. I know how distressing this must be for you. I'll be as brief as possible. Are the four men who raped and beat you in this courtroom? Yes, they are. Would you point them out? Again, are these four men, John Lilowohe, Michael Romero, Harry Shigeru, and David Masuda, the four men who violated you? Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Murdoch. Thank you very much. I have no further questions. Mrs. Murdoch, I would also like to express my sympathy. I know this is very unpleasant for you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Now, Mrs. Murdoch, I'd like to go back to the night of September 5th, the night of the party at the Whispering Inn. You told the police, and Captain Curtis Maddox has so testified that you left the Whispering Inn sometime before 9 o'clock. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Correct. Where did you go? Go? You left the party about 9 o'clock. Where did you go, Mrs. Murdoch? I, uh... I walked towards the beach. And you were alone? Yes. Until... Please continue. Until they came. Will you repeat that, please? I said until they came. Why are they ganging up on her? You were alone until they came. Who are they, Mrs. Murdoch? The men who attacked me. Tell the court what happened. Objection. The witness has already identified her assailants. Does counsel have to subject her to this additional torture? Your Honor, the defendants in this case are on trial because of Mrs. Murdoch's sworn testimony of their presence and involvement in a crime under law. I'm trying to... Overruled. 
Proceed, Counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. Mrs. Murdoch, you said you were attacked. I asked you to tell the court what happened. Uh, they raped me. Held me and raped me. Each of the four defendants raped you? Yes. Who was the first? Uh, Mrs. Murdoch, I asked you, who was the first of the defendants to rape you? <laughs> You've identified the four defendants as the men who raped you. Which one was the first? It was him. He was the first. She's lying! Sit down. One more word out of you, and you're going to jail now. And that goes for any of you. Go ahead, Counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Mrs. Murdoch, who was the second man to rape you? Cut it out, Counsel. You're brutalizing the witness. Your Honor, I am defending four innocent men Change accused of... Of course, you've exhausted that line of questioning. Your Honor, I have here exhibits A, B, C, D, E, and F, as marked at a previous hearing for identification. May they be received. Any objection? Uh, no, no objections, Your Honor. Very well. Please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Mrs. Murdoch, were you wearing this dress when you were beaten the night of September 5th? Yes, I was. And this slip? Yes. And these panties and stockings? Yes, and yes, yes, yes. Dr. Frank Puana has testified that when you arrived at Mercy Hospital, your face and neck were covered with blood. The blanket in which you were wrapped was covered with blood. You were bleeding profusely. Dr. Puana took 46 stitches in your face and neck to stop the bleeding. These garments have been examined in the laboratory of the Honolulu Police Department. There is not a drop of blood on a single garment. There is not a drop of blood on your shoes. Can you explain this, Mrs. Murdoch? No, no. You testified you were wearing these clothes when you were beaten. But Dr. Puana testified you were nude when you reached Mercy Hospital. Did someone remove your clothes? I don't remember. Did you remove your clothes? I can't remember. These clothes were found in a palm grove near the Whispering Inn. Were you in a palm I grove the night of September 5th? Please stop! Please stop! Mrs. Murdoch, please stop! Boy! Boy! 